Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Two Ways to Skin a Cat, a show where we talk about career experiences, entrepreneurship, and investments. The main aim of the show is to, to show you that there's more than one way to be, be successful other than just climbing the corporate ladder. A reminder that the show will be available on YouTube and podcast by latest tomorrow morning. So if you are watching live, uh, please drop a one in the comments so that I know I'm not talking to myself. And if you're watching the recording, please drop a two in the comments. So this week, oh, I don't see any comments, so it looks like I'm talking to myself. But anyways, let's carry on. This week, we are talking personal budgeting. So if you want to be an investor, or if you want to be financially free, you need to know what expenses you have so that you know how much money you need to have or need to earn for that month to cover those costs. Similarly, if you have uh, rental properties, you can't survive without a budget. If you can't budget, don't waste your time with any anything else, any fancy investments or any rental property. Work on that first because that's the base. If you don't have the base, you have nothing. Now, throwing up a budget and having a budget is one thing. Sticking to that budget is something different altogether. So my advice is don't make your budget too tight that it's difficult to stick to. Make provisions for emergencies, make provisions for unplanned expenses. That way you don't feel like you're being handcuffed by your budget because that's not that's not the aim to feel like you can't spend on or you can't buy anything. That's not the idea of a budget. The budget is just to have a guide so that, that you don't live above your means, but you still enjoy yourself. So what I'm saying is, I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm not saying, don't go on holidays, not at all. I'm saying budget for your fun. If you want to go on holidays twice a year, by all means do that, but include it in your budget so that you don't go on your holiday and then you end up having to use an overdraft and spending 20% to 25% interest rates because you didn't budget for your expenditure. Something that, that, that uh, and I'm not saying live cheaply either. I'm saying love, uh, I'm saying love the lifestyle that makes you comfortable. So if you like ban buying fancy things, by all means, buy those fancy things, but budget to buy fancy things every now and then. Don't just buy fancy things every uh, just just all willy nilly. Your budget also needs to suit your personality. The only way that it can suit your personality is if you understand yourself, if you have that self awareness. So, as an example, if you feel poor, if your bank account is zero the day before payday, then you can't budget for your bank account to be zero the day before payday. You need to have some sort of buffer amount in place alternatively if you if cash sitting in your bank account is a reason for you to spend like i've got money i'm going to spend it then having zero the day before payday is particularly a good thing assuming the reason you got to zero is if you saved some money or you invested some of that extra cash and you didn't waste it on unnecessary things um, having a budget is kind of like a counter-attacking strategy so if you know what expenses are coming at you you can prepare and you can attack it if you're just spending and spraying and praying and hoping it works out, you, you're not, you're not going to win. If you do have any questions, please put them in the chat and I'll try and answer them towards the end. So, okay. So we talked about budgeting. Now you've decided you want to set up a budget. So you're asking, where do I begin? Well, your bank account is probably a good place to start. And your bank account, I, I, I mean your, your check account or your savings account, but I also mean your credit card statement. Some of you have been spending on your credit card without knowing what's in that credit card and you only pay the lump sum the following month uh, or you pay off piecemeal. Please, please don't do that. Uh, if you don't know how to use a credit card properly, rather rather close your credit card because the, the, the interest rates in that are very expensive. So use your bank account and use your credit card statement. As a guide, I would say, for example, maybe use three months of bank statements. And if you look, if you look at those three months of banks, and you don't have to look at the PDF, you can your your bank account, you can download it in Excel, so you can sort it and filter it and do whatever you need to do. But if you look at three months of bank statements, if you pay the same amount every month for something, chances are you're going to be paying. If you pay the last three months for something, chances are you're going to be paying for it again in the future. So budget for it, whether that's rent or whatever that is. Uh, we're not going to be able to cover everything in this, but I'm just kind of giving you guidelines. So if it's rent, even if it's something that you wouldn't normally, if, if you signed up for Audible, as an example, it's not going to be on everybody's budget, but it's going to be on your budget because it's important to you. So again, that's tailoring your budget to suit your needs. 
Another thing is you also need to know what your net salary is that you get every month. Or, uh, sometimes business ma businesses make mistakes when they pay out net salaries and having a budget with your expected net salary is a quick way to check that they've underpaid you instead of the following month realizing, oh, you've been underpaid or after you've spent all your debit orders have come over and now you all of a sudden you don't have money in your account and you're trying to figure out what happened. Rather figure it out the day after payday than three weeks after payday when you've run out of money. A lot of people also have the issue of running out of money uh, at the end of the month before before payday. So what I do is I also have like weekly savings budgets, uh, sorry, weekly spending budget. So other than your normal monthly expenses, I have like a, almost like a slash fund for every week. So I've got four line items in my budget, week one, week two, week three, week four, whatever uh, that suits. What, so normally I buy like, you know, your weekly groceries. For example, if you like to eat out every week at some restaurant or whatever, make sure that amount is in your weekly budget. So uh, each, so it doesn't matter which week we are, I'm never, I never run out of money at the end of the month because I've got my weekly budget uh, that, uh, that, that I keep, keep for myself and then I never run out of money. Uh, my, my monthly budget also includes an amount for unbudgeted expenses. So just like a line item for ad hoc expenses or whatever, because you never know uh, what you might run into, something uh, something goes wrong, something breaks. And you, you might not be able to cover, maybe you covered, maybe in one month you don't use it and, and another month you use two months of that. Um, but it's uh, you don't have to stick to it 100%, but it's, uh, your budget is at least a guide that you need to work towards. It's not the end of the world if you don't make your budget every month or you spend a little bit more. That's fine as long as you understand why you spent it. Um, then you can use that knowledge to uh, to apply to the future. Because if every month you keep going over budget, chances are maybe you're spending on something every month that you're not aware of and you maybe need to put that into your budget. What I like to do is, so at the bare minimum, you should have a monthly budget. Like this is my salary and this is the expenses that I have every month, at the bare minimum. But I have, for example, I've got a 12-month budget broken down into months. Um, that way I can budget for annual expenses when they when they happen. So uh, I know if I'm going to go on a holiday towards the end of the year, I need to have that money towards the end of the year. I don't like to save up every month, but that's just me. I like to know, okay, it's coming in December. So as long as I have the cash in December, I don't need to have the cash in March for something I'm only going to spend in December. Also for like things like birthdays, because uh, every uh, sometimes you think, ah, oh, it's just a three hundred, or it's just a two hundred, it's just a five. So that's a lot of money. If there's ten people that have to buy birthday presents, well, that's five grand in a year that you could. If you don't budget for five grand in a year, you're gonna wonder where your money goes. The, and the way I've done it, I've even budgeted for things that that happen every few years. So, so um, like for example, things that happen, like replacing your tires, doesn't happen every year. But when it happens, it's a it's like four grand or something. It's it's not depending on your car, but it hurts. And so basically, based on my experience of years and years and years, I'm like, okay, I keep spending this every few months, or I keep spending this every few years. I'm actually gonna put it in my budget so that at least I'm prepared for it because I hate large unplanned expense, expenses. It's just especially those things like tires that they, they hurt if you don't budget for them because you, you, even if you have like a uh, an emergency saving or because I run my budget quite tight, it's, it's, it's never enough. So I rather plan for it than I know what's coming. Because I know I'm going to have to pay it in any case. So I rather plan for it. It gives me a sense of control. And like I said, at worst, you need to have a monthly budget with with a, a decent budget for unplanned expenses. But I like to have a whole lot of, for, for a whole year because then I can I can budget in the year for when Somebody's birthday is towards the end of the year. I don't need to buy the gift towards the end of the year. I don't need it. I don't need it at the beginning of the year. Or the birthday present needs to come at the beginning of the year. So I need to pay for the thing. Some people like to manage their budget with a book and a pen. By all means, do that. I like uh, Google Sheets or Excel. Um, and I, I like to manage mine at least on a weekly basis. So I track my budget on a weekly basis. Whatever suits you. So if you like a pen and a book, go for it. To me, that takes a lot of time. So I like Excel because I can copy it and, and move it. Uh, and change it every few days or every month or so. And I mentioned this earlier, but you should only use a credit card if you're dis disciplined enough to settle it in full when the payment is due. If you're paying off pieces, it's just going to be so expensive. 
I use the, I use the credit card as a tool in my favor as a cash flow management tool. So um, if you sometimes you get like days interest free, like 30 days or 60 days, uh, then it helps me to improve my cash flow now if I want to invest in something. And I, I, for example, I pay my rates with my credit card. I pay a lot of because of the, the credit card points that I get. It's worth it for me. But I pay off my balance every month, full balance, not not the ten or the minimum balance, the full balance every every time when it's due. I pay it off because if you don't pay it off, you're just going to be chasing your tail, and you you're never going to get out of the credit card debt. So I'd rather make sure you pay it in full every month and use it as a tool. Don't let it use you. I I check my budget to my online banking at least once a week to make sure I'm in line with budget, or if I'm not in line, to understand why I'm not in line and to make adjustments if I need to. And this includes my credit card account, so my my, my, my check account and my credit card account, because then at least I know next month what I need to pay before the bank tells me what I owe. I already have an idea of what I owe. It just gives me a sense of control. Sometimes, in terms of budgeting, some people like to have, you know, sometimes people offer you, like, if you pay for the full year, you get a discount. Um, use it, don't use it, I'll give you my, my. so if it's something that you pay for in a full year, if you get a discount uh, of 5%, it's probably not worth it because you rather have the cash on you. Um, cash is king. And even on a time value money of money basis, 5% is not worth it. At least you want to get at least a 10% discount to pay up front, but I would probably want higher because I'd rather have the cash with me. And I'd rather pay every month. So I'd, I'd be looking for a little bit more, but at the minimum, a 10% discount. I know that those things can apply to like school fee. Again, you need to understand your um, your personality. So for example, things like school fees, I like to pay on a monthly basis because I keep like, uh, I know some people who, who want to pay it upfront because then they know they're done for the year and they don't have to worry again. Again, you need to uh, tailor it to suit your personality. What works for you might not work for me and vice versa. And and you're not going to necessarily get it right first time. It's always a learn. Even though I've been doing this for many years, it's always something new to learn. So you learn. It's all about learning and how can I tweak it? How can I adjust it? What can I try this year that I didn't try last year, and see what or, or what the consequences are. I even in my in my annual budget, I even a budget for like replacement of large household items. So um, for example, you're gonna need to replace. Not, a, not your washing machine, but like things that things that need to be replaced every year. But you need you need to buy new cutlery, towel, things like that every now and then. Some months that budget might not get used, and some months you might use four months of budget in that one month, like buying new pots or something like that. Uh, those hurt. But uh, if you manage it well, you say, okay, I'll use this month budget and I'll use next month's budget. But the next month you can't use something else. You need to do, or not you can't, you should try not to use something else. I mentioned, for example, that I, I use uh, uh, my credit card to get points. So things like, you ask, how am I paying my rates on my credit card? So I use PayCity, it, it helps a lot. Um, if you earn, I mentioned it also before, but if you own investment properties, earning rentals, you must budget for the rentals and the costs because the timings can be very different. There's a lot of guides online as to what percentage you should use to save for your needs, wants, and savings. But I think that's a personal thing. So if somebody talked about, uh, there was an article online that said 50% for needs, 30% for wants, and 20% for savings, who, who know? like it's a personal thing. What works for you doesn't necessarily work for, for me, but just budget for it. Another thing that I would recommend is also, you must be saving every month. You can't invest without saving. So, so maybe use that savings to invest, whatever that is. But if you are spending all your salary on stuff, then what happens in a month when you, if you, you have to have some sort of budget for worst case scenario, or if something happens, or, or some, like some people have like three months expense. What, I, I, I'm not going to tell you which, how many months expenses to save for. Um, you need to you need to tie that into your, your your personality. Again, if you're saving for something big, let's say you want to go overseas next year or in three years' time, and well, I don't know what an overseas holiday costs, but let's say it's let's say it's fifty thousand rand or, or for two people, or whatever that amount is. If you know how much excess cash you have every month, um, let's say it's let's say it's two grand or five grand, whatever that is. If you know how much money that is, 
you know how much and you know how much the total cost needs to go on that overseas holiday you'll say okay let's say it's fifty thousand rand and you've got five five thousand rand that you can save every month fifty thousand rand time, uh, divided by that that, that five thousand every month okay ten months it will take you ten months to save for that thing similarly if you need to save for a deposit on the loan you apply that same principle if you want to save a hundred thousand rand for the deposit and you've got a certain amount of savings every month how many months is it going to take you to get to that point and then you start tweaking the, once you start doing a budget, you s start seeing things that you didn't see before. Extra money that you didn't necessarily see. If you once you start controlling your money, you'll see, hey, okay, you can. You maybe thought you could only save a thousand rand every month, but actually you can actually save two. Or if you tweak this a little bit, you can save more. Or just because your insurance pushed up your 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 um, premium by ten percent doesn't mean you have to take that. You can call them and say, listen, what's what's the deal? You you start to play with your with your amounts because you know what's coming and you can start to play around with it. So I talked about earlier about having a, a, a um, one thing that I didn't mention also is it's easier to, you, know, you must look out for your cash. So monitor your cash spend because money can disappear when you withdraw large amounts of cash and you just spend your cash. So that's why I like to, pref I prefer EFTs and credit cards because I can see where did that money go? But when I when I pay big amounts or when I pay things in cash, I just note them down on my phone. Like I spend 200 rand on this or whatever it is on this, um, so so that I can track it because all of a sudden like my money's gone and I don't I don't understand why that happens. But especially when you were throwing big amounts, if you were throwing big amounts of cash, they disappear if you're not keeping track of it, and then you can lose. Then you're not you're not budgeting or you're not keeping track of your budget. In terms of, I know I mentioned I had that annual budget, so. The nerd in me is actually also I've got uh, the nerd in me is actually got like three years a budget for the next three years on a monthly basis. But I've got kids and, I, and I've got things to save for, so um, that's why I do it. Uh, and I kind of just increase my my annual expenses by or even my monthly expenses by inflation every year, or my or what my expected. It's not I'm not going to be exactly right, but at least I'm going to have an idea. Especially if I'm saving for something like a, a big overseas trip or a deposit on 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 a house. I like to have that three years because I can see. Okay, if I add it all up, I can actually see the number at the end of the three years and say, okay, I'm gonna get there because I'm planning for it. I know I can get to it. So I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the part about budgeting that I'm not good at. So I'm not good at having a savings buffer because if I see cash lying in my account, I want to either invest it or pay down debt. It's just it's just sitting there and it bothers me. Because I plan for most of my expenses, so having money just sitting there for no apparent reason bothers me. So I struggle to have, uh, I don't have an emergency fund because I save and invest, or I invest most of my money, or I pay down uh, any debt that I have. So I prefer to invest that because also money sitting in a, in a, in a, in a bank account doesn't earn a, a high return. Your interest rate is very low. Um, I can so I will run my budget a little bit hot, but I'm lucky in that uh, the bank that I have has a very a, a good size overdraft at a very good rate in the in case of emergencies. So I don't use it for daily things like the worst would happen. I'm I'm lucky in that fact. Um, chartered accountants who have access to Investec are generally lucky with that. Um, so let's let's go through some questions to see if there's anything that's come through. Okay, let's see this question. Let's see. Uh, thanks, Lazarus. Let's see what you've got. This, Kim has got. Uh, glad that you enjoyed that uh, that tip, Kim, about the credit card. So we've got a question here from Matari. I'm still seeing this year because usually the the time of the year my credit card is paid off. Oh. Okay, now not a question, but a statement. So if you can pay your credit card off. What I notice also from budgeting is that um, bonus people get bonuses in December. B bonuses are great. I mean, you can uh, if you can use some of it to save, use some of it to pay off debt, and then use some of it to to spend on yourself because you you've earned it. You worked hard. Uh, how you do that is up to you. Some people just like to use a third, a third, a third, so that it's like okay, I'm spending a bit on myself. Okay, I'm investing in my future. Okay, I'm settling off debt. So. I'm kind of covered and I'm not, I don't feel like I'm poor. Um, so that's, a, but the problem with, with, with bonuses is, is it can also cover, it can cover up bad budgeting habits. So if you never budget for, um, like I mentioned, 
large household items. When you get your bonus, you can kind of buy, you can buy those household items with a bonus and, and you're safe. But what happens is, say you change jobs and your new job doesn't have a bonus structure in place and you only get your salary. Now you have to change your budget to, to cater for those large items that you previous, previously used to cover with your bonus that are not being covered anymore. So think about that in how, in, in how you spend your bonus. So, Smangele says, how do you maximize having a credit card using it in a good way? So what I do is, like I said, I'm, I'm, I monitor my budget on a, on a weekly basis. So um, if I spend on my credit card, I actually, you can access your credit card statement online uh, uh, live. You don't have to wait till the statement comes at the end of the month. So, and every bank's got it. If your bank doesn't have it, you're probably using the wrong bank and you need to change your credit card. Uh, because you can monitor it on a weekly basis. You can say, well, these are the, the expenses that I've spent on. So if you're spending, if you go into the restaurant and using your credit card, that's part of your weekly budget. Even though you, whether you're spending it on your credit card or whether you're spending it on your check card or whether you're spending it cash, it's all coming out of your account. So you need to cater for that. You need to, you need to record it. It doesn't matter that it's only going to come off your bank account maybe next month, but if you don't cater for it, you could have a big amount coming off your account next month and you, you might just be chasing the can down the road with and, and never being able to settle. Don't get into the situation of not being able to settle, settle your credit card account because that, that's a big problem. So use it for, it's like all, all everything is like online banking, I mean, sorry, online purchases, buying your groceries, pay for rates, anything that you can use to spend your credit card. If, and that's if you can, if you can't, if you're not good at managing your credit card, then don't do it. Rather play it safe and don't do it. But if you want to maximize it for the points, I mean, people get anywhere between Depending on what you spend, you can get anywhere between 200 and 500, 700 and back. Some people get up to 1,000, depending on whether it's e-bucks or, or this, uh, what's this, Discovery Miles. It depends a lot on those. So we've got another question coming through here. Any budgeting tips for people with variable incomes? Ooh, so that's tricky. Um, if you have an idea of what you're going to get every month, or at least the money. So you need to, but you can't budget for the, your best month. You kind of have to budget for not your, maybe not your worst month, but uh, not your worst case scenario, but like a little bit above your worst case scenario. Are you covering all your expenses? Um, and you need to have a big buffer in place because it's great in a good month, but in a bad month, you could be in trouble. In a COVID month where you can't go out and sell or you have to sell online, things things can get very tricky. So. Yeah, it's uh, when you when you when you if you're a salesperson earning commission, a lot of them have like a base salary at least, and then you know as a salesperson with experience, you know there's a minimum of number of sales that you generally eat every month, uh, at, even in a bad month. So at least budget like that, and then everything on top of that is gravy. You can save it, invest it, and uh, I mean, do what you want with it, but at least you've covered your expenses. So I think that's probably my answer in terms of variable incomes. It doesn't look like there's any more questions, so I'm going to keep it open for a little bit. Just a reminder that the show will most likely be available on YouTube and podcast by tomorrow morning. The next episode is going to be an interview with someone. Uh, I don't want to re uh, reveal too much now, uh, but uh, I'm excited to have that. So, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you very much for joining us for another episode of Two Way to Skin a Cat. There's probably two more episodes left for this year, so um, all the best. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.